hello all welcome to this channel all the data regarding the current affairs will be made available in this channel after preparation please visit the new channel feel free to learn current affairs for mcq testing current affairs in this video we'll be looking into three important events that took place recently in detail number one the flash floods caused by nanda devi glaciers in uttarakhand second sri lanka clears a Chinese energy project, 50 kilometers of Tamil Nadu, and third is the National Marine Total Action Plan. Moving on to the first topic, Nanda Devi Glacier breaks and causes a flash flood in Uttarakhand. Before getting into the topic, let me make you familiar with two basic terminologies, namely glacier and avalanche. What is a glacier? A mass of ice that moves slowly along a valley is called as a glacier. What is an avalanche? Avalanche is also a mass of ice, snow, debris, rock, it can be anything, but it should flow from a high altitude to a low altitude along a mountainside and cause a damage where it hits. This is called as avalanche. Keeping these two terminologies in mind, let us move into the topic. A portion of the Nanda Devi glacier broke causing a massive flash flood in the Dhali Ganga River, damaging Joshi Mat of Uttarakhand's Chamoli district on Sunday. In order to understand the location better, let us look into the geography of Uttarakhand. Uttarakhand is the only state of India to be divided into two. It has two divisions, namely the Garhwal Division and the Kumao Division. The green region is called as the Gadwal division and the red region is known as the Kumao division. Here, here it is very clear that the Chamoli district where the Dhali Ganga river has hit hard is clearly belonging to the Gadwal division. And the exact location where the flood has hit hard is the Tapovan region and it is located here. And the Nanda Devi glacier which broke is located here. The glacier ice broke causing the Dhali Ganga river to flood attacking Tapovan. In order to keep this location in mind, I have tracked down the exact location starting from the state and connected it in bubble diagrams. So if you want to know the location, you can look into this diagram. Now talking about the Nanda Devi glaciers, as the name suggests, it is not a single glacier, it is a group of glaciers. That is why called as Nanda Devi group of glaciers. This glacier belongs to the Himalayan mountain range and it is the second highest peak of India right after Kanjanjunga. It is also uh, placed in the Chamoli district of Uttarakhand. They are safely placed in between two very important valleys, namely the Rishi Ganga Valley on the west and the Gori Ganga Valley on the east. Before locating the Dali Ganga River, let us also look into the other rivers that Uttarakhand holds. Uttarakhand holds two important rivers, namely the Bhagirathi and the Alaknanda. Bhagirathi arises from the Gangotri Glacier and flows along one side of Uttarakhand. The other side of Uttarakhand holds the Alaknanda River. These two rivers unite to form the Greater Ganges at a point called Haridwar. As you can see in this picture, the Dhali Ganga River is nothing but a tributary to the Alaknanda River. So these are all the details regarding the rivers of Uttarakhand. The Dhali Ganga River which was flooded by the breaking of Nanda Devi Glacier not only caused heavy floods in Tapovan, but it also nearly washed away two important hydropower projects. Hydropower projects are installed in places where water flows from a very high potential to a low potential. This is because the kinetic energy of the water can be easily converted into electric energy and later used for domestic purposes. Two such important hydroelectric power plants are the Rishi Ganga power project and the Tapovan Vishnugat, which were nearly washed away, leaving behind many many workers missing. This entire process is called as the Glacial Lake Outburst Flooding, GLOF. Let me explain this entire phenomenon in detail. When a glacier breaks, chunks of ice from the glacier move slowly and starts forming a lake. The water in the lake keeps on increasing until the entire glacial portion is fully melted down. 
okay so now when the glacier when the uh, lake is not able to withstand any more water that is when the uh, when the lake is not able to sustain any more volume of water in it it starts letting the water out so this water flows from the lake uh, to a lower a lower altitude and meets with a river in this case the river here is the Daliganga river and the glacier which broke was the Nanda Devi glacier when the water entering the river from the lake is exceedingly high only then it it actually floods the river it uh, uh, the flash flood which was caused later damages the banks and the civilizations aside this process is called as GLOF. In order to resolve this particular situation, Chief Minister Mr. Trivendra Singh Rawat has suggested certain measures regarding the two important rivers, Bhagirathi and Alaknanda. Let us look into the map. The flow of Bhagirathi here is temporarily stopped. And the two important dams, namely the Srinagar Dam at Srinagar and Rishikesh Dam at Rishikesh are temporarily emptied so that the excess water flowing from the Dhali Ganga River will pass through these two dams without causing any further disturbances or flooding along the banks of Alaknanda and peacefully flow into Ganga. This was one measure. And the other measure was uh, he employed hundreds of Indo-Tibetan police to carry out rescue operations. at a place called Raini village where this particular flood has hit hard. For further updates regarding this particular news, look into the upcoming videos. Moving on to the second topic, Sri Lanka clears the Chinese energy project 50 kilometers off Tamil Nadu. A Chinese company called as the Sinosaur e techmin joint venture in China has won a contract to set up hybrid solar and wind energy systems in three Sri Lankan islands of North Jaffna just 45 kilometers away from Tamil Nadu. The areas chosen are Naina Thiva, Nedin Thiva and the Analai Thiva. The Nedin Thiva is also called as Delt. These three islands are located in Park Bay. Park Bay is nothing but the water body that runs between the southeast of India and Sri Lanka. It is practically the ocean lying between the two countries. These three islands are located very close to each other and they belong to the same Jaffna territory. Out of these three islands, Delt, that is a Nedan Thiva, is the biggest and the most proximal island to Rameshwaram. That is, it is only 45 kilometers away from Rameshwaram. In this picture, we can clearly see the three islands. This is Nedan Thiva, that is Delt. This is Naina Thiva and Analai Thiva. It is clearly visible that Delt is the biggest island. These three islands have suffered neglect during the civil war. This is because the ancestors who lived there fled the civil war. They escaped in boats to India because they thought that uh, Indian government was much safer to them than the Sri Lankan government. Because of this, Sri Lankan government has left these three islands much less developed than the other islands of Jaffna. The real concern is that with Chinese occupying the Delt, it will be much easier for them to surveil India or cause any disturbances being in a very proximal distance. Regarding this issue, nor the Indian government or any higher officials of India have commented anything, but some Indian voices in Sri Lanka have raised concerns because of the project size its proximity and the advantages China might want to take. Moving on to the next topic, this is not the first time China has got something to do with Sri Lanka. Uh, back in 2018, China was China offered a 300 million dollar housing project to Sri Lanka. That is, it was ready to build houses and roads in the war-hit regions of the North Sri Lanka. But then this happened in uh, August 2018 and in October 2018, the then Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi went to Sri Lanka and talked with the President. He told that the bidding process which was conducted was opaque, that is it was not transparent, it was unfair. So because of this, China, uh, sorry, Sri Lanka had to drop this project. So it was signed in August 2018 and it was withdrawn in October 2018. To avoid such situations with the wind energy project, uh, Sri Lanka's High Commissioner to India, Mr. Austin Fernando, 
reason that this time Sri Lankan government is not to be blamed because uh, this wind energy project is backed by the Asian Development Bank and Sri Lanka has to abide by the rules and guidelines provided by the Asian Development Bank. Now let me tell another instance from the recent past. In 2014, an incident took place. Uh, the port of Colombo, that is a Sri Lankan port, has three terminals. The East Container Terminal, West Container Terminal and the most important Colombo International Container Terminal, that is CICT. The development and enhancement of the CICT was done by China in 2013. So during this time, around in 2014, India spotted hovering uh, submarines, Chinese submarines docking in Sri Lanka despite raising concerns by India. Because India was afraid that, it was concerned that China might bring uh, navy or military weaponry to Sri Lanka aiming for India. Nothing like that happened but then they were worried about it. So uh, Mr. Austin Fernando continued that with India's position in the past starting from what had happened in 2014 regarding the submarines, continued by the recent disputes in Ladakh by China and the latest uh, Chosin cites its proximity to Indian coastline. With all these in mind, he told that India raising concerns is understandable and unsurprising. That is, he finished that. He finished by telling that this time Sri Lankan government is also not to be blamed. And because that India and China are not in good terms with each other, India's raising concerns is understandable. So this is it. Any other updates regarding this topic will be updated in the upcoming videos. Moving on to the final topic, the National Marine Turtle Action Plan. The Ministry of Environment, Forest and the Climate Change, MOEFCC, has launched a new scheme with two perspectives, the Marine Mega Fauna Stranding Guidelines and the National Marine Turtle Action Plan on January 28, 2021. During the launch event, the Union Environment Minister, Mr. Jeff, Mr. Prakash Javadekar quoted that both the floral and the faunal diversity, including the marine biodiversity, is the beauty of India and we need to conserve it with best possible actions and interventions. Now let us look into the importance of this plan. In order to know the importance of the plan, we need to know the importance of India's marine biodiversity. India is very rich in its biodiversity and this, and this is because that India has a vast coastline of 7,500 kilometers. Many people all over India are dependent on these resources for their livelihood. For example, some people are into businesses regarding mar maritime transport and trade. Some of the people are dependent on the ocean for food and minerals. And most importantly, the beauty of the marine biodiversity attracts tourists from all over the world, adding credit to India's tourism. So this is the importance of marine biodiversity. But some marine animals, especially the sea turtles, maritime turtles, face a variety of challenges including stranding and entanglement. What is stranding? An animal is said to be stranded when it is found dead floating in water or it is found in the ocean beaches deeply injured that it is not able to return back to its habitat. This is when an animal is said to be stranded. What is entanglement? Entanglement is simply getting trapped inside a net or a bag or anything okay if an animal if animals continue to be stranded and entangled for a prolonged period of time then there will be significant decrease in the population of these species okay in order to avoid that for the long-term conservation of these animals and their habitat government has to take action with the help of people's participation now let us look into the features of the national marine turtle action plan number one ways to improve or promote the intersectoral action for conservation. Government has launched ways to improve the coordination between different sectors. Number two, also guide improved coordination between the government, civil societies and the relevant stakeholders. Relevant stakeholders are here, any individuals or companies who have in invested in the ocean. Actions are to be taken for handling the stranded animals. The stranded animals are either dead or deeply injured. In case of being dead, they need to be disposed and in case of being deeply wound, they need immediate medical attention. So they are to be provided. Rehabilitation of the degraded habitats. If human actions lead to the degradation of a habitat, then it is, it is nece necessary that these animals which are affected need to be located to a different place and provided a proper living circumstance. That is rehabilitation. 
reducing threats to marine species and habitats. Generally, the stranding of animals happen due to human causes and non-human causes. Natural causes can be like exposure to algal blooms or unfavorable weather conditions. We cannot do anything about the natural causes. But regarding the human causes, causes like uh, injuries caused by ships and boats and uh, getting entrapped inside a fishing gear are some of the human causes. These causes can be mitigated. So these are some of the features of the plant. Okay, now let us look into the variety of Indian turtles along with their IUCN status. IUCN means International Union for Conservation of Nature. This is a union which generates a red list having the most threatened plants and animals of the year all over the world. Okay, so these are the turtles, Indian turtles listed and their IUCN statuses are as follows. The olive ridley turtle, loggerhead turtle and the leatherback turtles are listed to be vulnerable. The green turtles are endangered and the hawksbill turtles with the, which are the very important variety of turtles are critically endangered. They are protected in the Indian Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 under Schedule 1. There are totally 22 schedules in this act and these turtles are protected in Schedule 1. They are also listed in the Appendix 1 of CITES. CITES means Convention on International Trade of Endangered Animals of the Wild Flora and Fauna. This is nothing but a treaty among the various countries all over the world agreeing to the fact that illegal trade, any illegal trade of the wildlife animals, especially the threatened animals, should be banned. Okay? Uh, animals, especially the wildlife animals, live a best life only when they are in their natural habitat. If they are to be illegally traded and if they face any unfavorable environment, then it may lead to the death of the animals. So in order to avoid this situation, the sites take care of this. They are also protected under the Biodiversity Conservation and Ganga Regeneration Program. So being listed in all these protection acts, it is now understandable that how important it is to save the conserve the Indian turtles. Now let us look into the important Indian sea turtles and what unique role each of them play in the conservation of uh, biodiversity. These sea turtles are very important and they play a very important role in the food web. This is because they feed on miscellaneous prey. That is, they eat different kinds of food that the other organisms of the marine, marine ecosystem find unusual to feed on. Example, crustaceans, sponges, tunicates, sea grasses and algae. Okay, these are different kinds of food that the other organisms find unusual to feed on. They also convey, that is, they transport nutrients from energy-rich marine habitats like sea, sea grass beds to energy poor habitats like the sandy beaches. Okay, now let us look into the variety of Indian turtles and what unique role each of them play. Number one, the olive ridley turtles. There are three important points to be remembered regarding the olive ridley turtles. Number one, this species is the second smallest and the most abundant of all the sea turtles found in the world. Okay. And the unique mass nesting behavior of this particular variety is called as Aribada. The olive ridley sea turtles also take rest in the ocean floors. So during this time, small fishes which are escaping from shark attacks hide under the shells of the olive ridley turtles in order for protection. So in this way, olive ridley turtles save the lives of small fishes. This is the third point. So this is all the information regarding olive ridley turtles. Moving on to the next type, loggerhead. The next variety is the loggerhead turtles. They are called as loggerhead turtles because they have a very big head. They are Mediterranean turtles nesting mainly in Greece, Turkey, Libya and Israel. The way the loggerhead feeds on hard-shelled organisms. It is a hard-shelled organism and it feeds on other hard-shelled organisms by crushing the hard-shelled organisms with its head and feeds on it. So in this way, it recycles important nutrients and keeps the ocean floor sediments in balance. There's also another important uh, feature. The shell of the loggerhead uh, turtles contain a separate group of animals and plants of its own. That is, the shell of the loggerhead turtle is a separate habitat. 
okay moving on to the next turtle leatherback turtles leatherback turtles are the largest turtles of all the sea varieties sea turtle varieties they are found in atlantic pacific and in indian oceans they are black in color and they are called as leatherback because they have a leather like shell the unique feature of the leatherback turtles is that they feed on jellyfishes jellyfishes are generally not eaten by the other organisms because they are toxic leatherback turtles are immune to eating jellyfishes that is why they eat jellyfishes generally feed on larval fishes that is baby fishes if they eat away all the baby fishes then the fish population will be easily declined so hence fish population is kept in balance by the leatherback turtles the next variety is the green turtles the green turtles are called as green turtles because they are green in color they attain the green body, body fat by eating sea grasses and algae they are strict vegetarians and they are the second largest sea turtle varieties in the absence of the green turtles the sea grass will not be eaten by anything and it will start to decompose the decomposition of the sea grass beds will uh, support very toxic unpleasant life forms like invertebrates algae fungi etc which is proven to be dangerous for the marine ecosystem so in this way green turtles play a very important role coming to the final variety the hawksbill turtles the hawksbill turtle play a very important role in the reef ecosystem this is because they feed on a very toxic variety called as a sponges sponges looks like plants but is actually an animal this sponges grows on the reef coral reefs uh, like creepers not allowing the reef fishes to feed on the reefs if this kind of turtles feeds away all the sponges it will make the reefs accessible for the reef fishes to feed on in this way hawks will play a important role in the reef ecosystem okay so in this video we have looked into all the three topics in detail after watching this video please prepare on yourself too and after preparation visit the new channel feel free to learn current affairs for mcq tests thank you so much for watching this video